scale of the Earth. The bubble's size was a few millimeters. The size of the Earth, the, the radius of the Earth, is 6,400 kilometers. Okay. So I've changed scales by six orders of magnitude. Okay. So can I understand exactly this question? And I want to now show you in some detail what the question is. So this is the same picture that I showed you. If I unfold it, so I have to tear it up, or I have to stretch these regions. And so Greenland is not really as big as it looks on a map, because it's essentially been pulled out. And India is much bigger than it looks relative to other uh, places, because of course it's at the equator. So if I now pull this apart, so this is exactly, that's Alaska. These are the islands of Japan. Those are the Aleutian Islands. There's Sakhalin. And you can actually see this arc. Okay. So in school, you also learn something about how plate tectonics works. Yes, everybody? OK, that's a very recent revolution. It's only 50 years old. And in plate tectonics uh, uh, theory, what people tell us, and there's pl plenty of evidence now, is that you have hot molten rock, which is coming up in the mid-Atlantic ridges. That's moving out. So somewhere here, I can't really show you the Atlantic. It's somewhere there. So mid-Atlantic ridge, molten rock coming out. Molten rock is hot, and so it's light relative to cold rock. So it's hot and light. It cools. If it cools, what's going to happen? What happens something that's heavy? It falls. So it settles back in. And when it settles back in, so these are the regions where molten rock is essentially coming out. This is Pacific Ridge. It cools and settles. And when you see it cooling and settling, you see that it cools and settles and collapses back, collapses back along arcs. And these are called subduction zones. And these subduction zones are curved. You see this in the Northern Pacific. You see this off the coast of South America over here. You see a part which is straight. This is Baja California, the southwestern Pacific near Australia, Java, Sumatra, lots of places. So the question is, can we understand that? And can we understand that? What's the mathematical question? What's the physical question? Why does the subduction zone form in such a small, narrow region? So the Earth, when, it, when, when the crust falls back in, it doesn't gradually fall back in. It falls back very suddenly. This dimension is a few thousand kilometers, but this dimension is a couple of hundred kilometers. So why is there a difference? Why is there such a, such a large, rapid deformation when you get arc-like uh, uh, deformations, when you get straight? So over here, it's straight. And why is there a polarity? Every time you see this, so the black arrows correspond to where the molten magma is coming out, and it always has got a polarity, so it looks like it's always convex facing uh, the uh, location from where the rock came. Can you understand these? And Charles Frank, a mathematical physicist at Bristol 50 years ago, slightly less than 50 years ago, said, well, I will understand this if I understand how a ping pong ball deforms. So again, trying to make connections. So this is a ping pong ball. And the ping pong ball, or a table tennis ball, I don't know what it's called, what the game is called over here. Uh, it's a ping pong ball where you push hard enough, and you see that it's essentially reversed its curvature at one location. So it's puckered. Okay. And you see that when it puckers, it puckers along a curve. You cannot make a ping pong go ball reverse curvature along a line. And Charles Frank said, well, that's because of the double curvature. That's because this surface is actually curved in one direction and in the other direction. And therefore, if I try to deform it, I'm not going to be able to deform it over a line. And that's different from if I did exactly the same problem with a flat sheet, I can make it crease along a line. It's impossible to make a curved object crease along a line. It will curve, crease along a curve. Okay? Not only that, it will actually crease so that I have not one curve, but often multiple curves. And so he had this idea. He wrote a paper which was about a paragraph long. That's it. And he said, this should qualitatively explain things. So we took that idea a little further. Other people have done the same. And we said, well, what happens if I have an object which has two curvatures? Okay? And I want to now try and do a second experiment. Now, the honey experiment is over, so let me see. I want to do a second experiment. Yes. Second experiment is, I told you what would happen, but nothing interesting happened with the flat sheet. How much time do I have? Just five minutes. Just five minutes? Huh? I want these experiments. Though. Yes, OK. So I'll do the experiments. So let me see if I can push. Do you, do you see, by just looking at the light reflect, do you see? Here, a curve, and there a curve. People see that? OK, just see, look at the light reflected. OK? Let me try that over here. And, I, and you see how easy it is for me to deform things over here, and how stiff it is over there. Well, you can't actually see this. You have to play with it. 
Now you can see again, locations over here, it's curved, in this location it's curved, and then you form something which looks like a polyhedron. So that was what led us to think about how and when you get these polyhedral surfaces, and that's associated with stiffening. I'll give you another example. When you take a slice of pizza and you want to put it in your mouth, if it's a large slice of pizza, what do you do instinctively? You curve it. And when you curve it in one direction, what happens? It stiffens in the other direction. OK? Well, that's exactly what's true for a shell. An egg shell is very, very stiff and hard to break because it's actually curved in two directions. In fact, it's easier to break it from the inside. So there's a moral over here. The moral is if you want to essentially break into something, you first get into the society, and then you break it from inside. <laughs> OK? So you can do an experiment. I'm sorry this is running out. So an experiment, uh, which is that this is a balloon now on the right side. And the balloon has been coated with paint over part of it and allowed to shrink. And when it's allowed to shrink, you see at the boundary between the non-painted and the painted part, red is paint, you start to see these arc-like structures that form, exactly like what happens on our planet. And if I use the idea that solids are like liquids, the analogy that I told you about, uh, you can essentially understand this. Okay? So I'm not going to get into the details. I want to do a next experiment now and think about not um, simple flat sheets, but I want to